Welcome to the North Point Guys podcast. My name is Michael Scott. And I'm Josiah Smith. We're so glad that you've joined us for another episode, and it's going to be a good one. It's I think be, all of them are good. I'm but excited. We have a lot of fine students here at North Point, mm-hmm. I believe, and I'd say we have one of our finest here with us today as well. I'd agree with that statement. Lindsay Moylan. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. Happy to be yeah. here. <laughs> Thanks for being on the episode here, the podcast with us. Yeah. Thank you for having so, me. So, Lindsay, let's see. Where should we start? You are a junior. Yes. Is that correct? All right, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at North Point. Okay. Um, I'm a junior. I'm from Connecticut. Okay. I grew up in Massachusetts, though, pretty much my whole life. Oh. I only lived in Connecticut during high school, but now I'm, like, oh, from right. Connecticut, you know? Uh, okay. Anyways, okay. Um, I'm an RA here. I've been an RA. This is my second year being an RA. Which, what's an RA? I mean, we know, but for I'm a resident year. assistant, so, so I just help out in the dorm. I, like, help girls if they want to talk about something or pray. Um, I also clean. It's very fun. <laughs> really? An RA is like the pastor on the hall. Yeah. Kind of, no, yeah. You're, you're advising, you're counseling, and you're cleaning. Yeah. Because let's be honest, pastors are cleaning, cleaning those toilets yeah. too. So. On sad days, we dress code and fine. But those are the sad those days. Those are sad days. On sad days, you okay. Yeah. All right. It's it's a sad day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you. Yeah. So an RA, what else? What else do I do? Um, I play keys on a worship team. Nice. I love playing intramural sports. I think it's so fun. We were um, on the same team. Oh. Yes, we were. The, Dean so Scott is, is one of the best person? volleyball sets I've ever yeah, experienced good. in my that's life. That's very important. It's on camera. <laughs> like, I think he might be better than my high school set. Wow. Genuinely. Wow. This so is you're a really lot. good set. All right. We're you're gonna, a very you. good set. We're going to have to, I don't know. Come down. <laughs> Yeah, to play so. Volleyball. Let's go. <laughs> so volleyball, did you play? Oh, yeah. Well, we were on the same team for soccer, weren't we? Yes, we were. Yeah. So volleyball, yeah. soccer. Yep. And then we have more in murals coming up this yes. semester. Right. Very fun, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Highly recommend. Anything else? Anything yeah. else? So RA, else? music. Um, what else do I do? I don't know. I hang and out what, with my friends. And what's your major? Your focus here? I'm a pastoral major. Pastoral yeah. major. But that's. You, you told us before, you don't necessarily want to be a lead pastor. No. So what's, what's kind of like, I mean, we don't have to get too detailed yet, yeah. but like, what's the big picture? What's God calling you big to do? The big picture is start my own evangelistic ministry and travel and preach and hopefully hold my own crusades one day and see tons of people get saved. Love That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. I mean, I've heard her speak a little bit and mm-hmm. I was blown away. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, like, she can preach and lives are going to be changed. I'm Praise curious God. with the crusades. Uh, have you been on a mission trip? I have. Where, they, where they've done anything like that? Um, yes. When I went to Guatemala in high school, we did some like kids crusades and yeah. some like regular ones too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. I wasn't sure if you'd been with Matias. At some no, point. I haven't been okay. with Matias. Okay. I've tried to. Haven't yeah. There. Do you have a and totally cool if you don't? Do you like have a certain area of the world that you're like I'd love to go there? Or I have a passion for that place. I'm not super specific. I'm willing to go anywhere, but right now I feel pretty passionate about just like the U S yeah. but yeah. really anywhere. And that's totally okay. I remember when we, well, when we were in college, yeah. you know, and people came in and they're like, I'm going to China. <laughs> and they knew the exact town. Yeah, this I was town. like, I, I knew the names I of the like, people. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> so I think it's okay. Yeah. Just yeah. To, in yeah. general. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, well, let's go, let's go back a ways. And, why don't you tell us how you came to know Jesus or how you submitted yourself to his lordship or how you were born again or any other way we might yeah. say saved. Sure. Yeah. I grew up in a Christian home, so I knew about Jesus my whole life. And when I was five years old, I was at my first vacation Bible school. People know what that is. It's literally just like kids day camp, like for Christians. Yes. But that's yeah. a great way to describe <laughs> it. <laughs> but it was actually a nighttime VBS. But anyway, it's besides the point. And I was at my aunt's church, and um, I remember them, like, giving a salvation call, and I, like, went up to my little, like, crew leader or whatever, and I was, like, very emotional. I was, like, really, like, felt convicted about my five-year-old sins, (laughs) and just, like, and she was, like, okay, she was, like, yeah, like, come up to the altar and, like, led me in a prayer to receive Jesus, and, like, really, like, that was, like, one of a a very powerful, like, moment in my life. I was, like, weeping under the power of God, like, Mm. yeah, that was the day my life changed forever, and then I just, like, grew up. I never really, like... I didn't, like, get super serious about God until I was, like, 12, and then that was when I, like, felt called to the ministry and all that. Wow, so at 12 years old, you felt God was calling you to vocational ministry. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so being saved, because I was also saved at a very young age. Yeah. I, I think I was six around that age. I'm, 
Sitting, I think it was around six. Sitting by a heater yeah. in my home. And yeah. Anyway, this isn't my story. Um, <laughs> do you feel like being saved at a young age up till now that there's been um, like a, a theme or like what has that growth looked like for you? Like, um, Yeah, I mean, honestly, like praise God, it's been just like a continual like growth like yeah. the whole time. Like mm-hmm. obviously there was like times in my life when I was young where I wasn't like super dedicated to God's work because I was just, I was young and didn't know and certain things I felt like, you know, no one really taught me until yeah. I got older. But yeah, I mean, I feel like I've just been like walking with Jesus. He's really like kept me and I've learned a lot. And it's been good. That's Which awesome. is an incredible testimony right there because I'm the same way, you know, grew up in church, mm-hmm. saved at a young age, never really fell away, all yeah. that stuff. And I remember a point where I was almost jealous of the testimonies of people that like, did all this crazy stuff and then right. miraculously radically came to the Lord. I'm like, I want that story. And then somebody, probably my wise youth pastor was like, no, 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 Michael, your testimony is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the fact that you're that committed and, and God sustain you and provide you and you've mm-hmm. grown. So, you know, I feel like those yeah. testimonies don't get as applauded. Yeah, and that's true. So, hey. And this is, this is maybe a tangent, but I feel like maybe our culture is part of the reason why, why that is. We watch movies. Movies are meant to be emotional. You yeah. have to have high highs. You right. have to have low lows. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to have something. And, well, stories do too. But but it's okay to have a steady growth story. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it does not have this thing. Um, it's just not a good movie. Yeah, yeah. you may not sell a lot of books. You may not yeah. sell a lot of autobiographies right off the bat. Yeah. But, yeah. So, Lindsay, how did you get, so 12 years old, you know, little Lindsay, she's like, I feel called. Um, how did you hear about North Point or how did you get here? What's that story? Well, my grandparents went to Zion Bible Institute. Yeah. So wow. like the oldest one. They wow. went to that one. Okay. East yeah. Providence. So, over in Rhode so Island. Yeah, yeah, my grandfather got saved in Zion Gospel Temple. Okay. And yeah. my grandma grew up in church, went right after high school. He was in the Navy, got saved. Anyways, it's not really about them. But yeah, so they went here and then went right into ministry after that. And then my aunt also went here and my sister went here, my brother-in-law, my cousin Shailen currently goes here. So I had like a lot of history here. So that's how I knew about the school. Heard about okay. the school my whole entire life. All those like great stories about Christine Gibson and um, like everything like that. I've heard like powerful so for, stories. For family reunions, you just oh yeah, just, just come to North Point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Everyone okay. has their Dr. Gallagher stories. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of like the only Bible school I really knew. And like growing up in a family that was like very involved in ministry, it was like you get called to ministry, you go to Bible school. It's yeah. just what you do. Yeah. Okay. So I just like, when I was like, I don't know, probably 15 or 16. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to North Point. I almost said Zion. I'm going to go to North Point, you know, whatever. And I mean, it wasn't like, I didn't like pray about it. I didn't fast. I didn't, I didn't know about anything else. So it's just Mm -hmm. like, all right, got to go to Bible school. There's a Bible school. So I just came. Easy. Yeah. It was nothing, no crazy profound moment, but that's awesome. So you're in your third year here. Yeah. Look back at the last two and a half, three years or so. What, what's kind of, what has God been doing since you came to North Point? I mean, yes, you follow the call to go to Bible college, mm-hmm. to study full-time ministry, but there's a lot of growth that happens once you get here. So, you know, maybe for tell sure. us a little bit about your experiences here, even some fun times or, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've loved college. It's been great. <laughs> I have fun. I really like the dorms and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had my most empowerful encounters with God since I've been at school and It's like you learn a lot in the classroom, which is cool, but then it's also like outside of the classroom too. Like I remember when I was a freshman and um, like some older students like invited me to go to revival meetings and things like that. And like that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. Like just like being in a place where it was like everyone was so hungry for God, like that they were willing to like take a night and not do homework. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm not encouraging not doing homework. Like I'm a good student. I do my homework. But like taking time and saying like, you know, what, like going in and, and experiencing God is actually more important to us than like getting a good grade or like, or even like working hard, like during the day to get your homework done. So you have time to go to revival at night. And like, those have been some of my most powerful times in school is like going to revival services, even just like sitting in chapel, like God's changed my life in the services I've sat in and like the powerful men and women of God I've had the privilege to sit under. Like, I really feel like the more time I spend in Bible school, the more I realize it's like, it really is a privilege that I get to be here. Mm. But yeah, I've seen God do like crazy, like financial miracles in my life. Like every single semester, I literally can never pay my bill. And then it just gets paid like thousands of dollars. Like last semester, I need like $10,000. And like literally none of that money came out of my own pocket. Like God just like took care of it for me. So I've had like random people call me and like offer to pay off my bill. 
but yeah, I've learned a lot and like God's really taught me a lot like through the word of God and learned a lot about making good friends, had a lot of not good friends in high school, learned what good friends look like. I and thought you were about to say a lot that. of not good friends here. Like, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. In high school, it was just like not good friends, yeah. but I came to college and have really, really great friends now who love God and are passionate and just are really sweet and yeah. Yeah. What? I mean, what does it feel like? I mean, we've experienced this too, but you know, you're talking about high school, not the best friends. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to be in a place where not only are they good people that are good friends, mm -hmm. but where everyone here like is called, is is passionate about what God wants to do in their life? What's that difference feel like? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely really encouraging because sometimes, like, I know in high school, like, I started like a Bible club, and it always felt like I was the only one. Yeah. It was like nobody serving God but me, and obviously yeah. that's like you're not supposed to feel that way. Like, <laughs> Bible literally talks about that, but it's here is really encouraging because it's like everybody has like a common goal, a common vision, and it's like it is like it challenges you sometimes too because like you'll be talking to someone, they'll be like have all these like dreams and like things that God's like put in their heart, mm -hmm. and you're like, man, like I need to like pray and like get like a divine instruction for my life of like what God has for me, like where I need to be next. So I really always just feel like very encouraged because even people who aren't necessarily like my friends, you know, like I mean, we hang out and stuff, but it's not like, you know, my best, best friends. Mm -hmm. Even then, like I'll be talking to them, I'll be like, wow, like God's really been doing a lot in your life. And like, I mean, like, I feel like maybe I've really been spending a lot of time with God or not always like doing everything I should be. And it like challenges you to like do better and just yeah. like really to be like committed to God. We actually but, talked about this in a recent orientation where like, yeah, for sure this school, like we're academic and we have the classroom and we learn Hebrew and, you know, things like that. But absolutely things that you don't receive uh, school credit for are a part of the experience here absolutely. for training you for life of ministry, yeah. you know, chapel services and being a part of the chapel service, leading prayer and mm -hmm. preaching and things like that. But also, you know, those late night talks in the dorms, I yep. think are super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our intern president actually mentioned recently as well, as an example of, uh, you, you said how God has provided for your school bill. I love that because even that is a training experience mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, when you're uh, evangelizing, doing yeah. crusades and raising funds, you know, for, to preach the gospel, like you have a benchmark already mm -hmm. where you look back at your time at North Point and said, there was that time I didn't have $10,000 and then I did yeah. because God provided. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? So yeah, it is definitely all part of the training. Yeah. yeah. Real quick. Any, I mean, all of our professors, amazing, but any ones that have just impacted your life already in your time here? Um, yeah. Dr. Richie's really great. I've like, he is such a disciplined man. Like when I'm in class and I'm like, I really need to be more disciplined because he'll be like talking about like reading. He'll be like, you guys really need to be doing your reading. He's like, I don't think so. Maybe and you're like convicted. You're like, man, I kind of did skim <laughs> last night. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I blinked It's uh, like on that one word. Yeah, 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 it's like, I didn't really like, you know, I wasn't like really comprehending all of it. Cause that's like for me, I'm like, I'll always read it. But sometimes I'm kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this but, is a man who reads the Bible in, in Greek and Hebrew. Yes, yeah. Yes. Maybe. Aramaic, Especially like know. when I took Hebrew with him, I was like, man, I'm like, I need to be more disciplined. <laughs> like, I'm like, anyways but yeah he's really great brother hodge really yeah. great learned so much from him he's like just a wealth of knowledge and like a very encouraging man like he prays like for all the students in the beginning of the semester you always like put in a little thing to him of like prayer requests and he'll mm. pray for you all semester mm. wow. like he's great he starts every class with like worship and like being in the word yeah and, like some of my like best like class time moments have been in his classroom i love that i i yeah. didn't know that until recently someone had told me that literally every class period you guys start in worship. Yeah. And that just speaks so highly of someone who is, again, highly academic right. and very learned and educated. But like first things first, let's let's worship Jesus yeah. even in the classroom. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love I've heard about his Pentecostal theology class where he'll yeah. talk about divine healing. Yeah. And then after he's done teaching on it, he's like, Well, you've learned about it. Let's practice it now. Yeah. All right. Who needs to be healed? Let's go. Yeah. Right and 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 they pray. I, it, so it's not just the head knowledge, but it's applying it and it's putting yeah. it in your heart. I love it. Yeah. I love it. He's so great. Good. He's like a great professor. Well, while we're talking about favorites, um, <laughs> peanut M&Ms or regular M&Ms? Oh, good question. Good question. Peanut, but I actually like the peanut butter ones better. Okay. Those are good. That's, not, little a, that's not a bad bag. Yeah. Yeah. So good. <laughs> the pretzel ones are my favorite, but peanut butter. Oh, it's interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. A little Layers. extra crunchy crunch. Layers, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> so Ooh, favorite 
food places in the Haverhill area. Oh. Hmm. You're talking about like restaurants or like what? Doesn't Just matter. Just like anything? You, where do you get your food that you love? Well, I love Wicked Big's coffee. Not yes. necessarily mm. their food. Though. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Jimmy K's Diner. Yes. Have you been yes. there? Yes. Okay, we're all in agreement. Oh, Even Matt's over here. Producer saying, Matt Caporio hey, is. Yes. yes. He's Jimmy praising K's the Lord. Jimmy K's. So good. Okay. So good. It's in a nice fall, environment, too. Yes. Yeah. And like in the fall, right. they have yeah. these pumpkin pancakes. They're incredible. Yes. Yes. Pancakes. I'm trying okay. to think what else I like. Casablanca is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a standard. Yeah, if it's you want okay. some good Mexican It's like food. a good yeah. classic. Yeah. Oh, there's a Greek place that I love. It is called The Fat Greek. It is so good. Is that on Main uh, or on Washington Street there? Yes. It's yes, like, I've been there. You know where you turn by the bus station to go to Wicked Big? Yeah. Right. It's like if you keep going straight on that road, it's right on the right on the corner. Oh, okay. See, that would be another question. Is it a, a euro, a euro, a hero, a gyro, a, a, it's a not gyro? Of options. I, I even spent a week like, in Greece and uh, I forget what they called it. So <laughs> like, I always think yeah. it's a euro, but I don't know. That's what I, I would say. I believe it. That's I what I would say. Kinda, I, say I feel Euro. like it's like a good try, even if you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay studies enough. Whatever she says, I'm like, yeah, oh that's it. Goodness. That's good. I good. so seriously, when I walk through your library, there's one student I always see in the library, and it's Lindsay. Always. Way Every to, time. Way to go. Way to go. Every time. What can I say? Yeah. I like school. <laughs> that's, that's a good, Same table. That's a good thing. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> that discipline coming yeah. in. All right. So Lindsay, to wrap things up here, you had mentioned you, know, you have a heart for evangelism. Um What's, what's like, what's something big, a big God dream that could happen? I think you kind of already mentioned it, so maybe it's the same, but. Yeah. Um, probably just like really starting my own ministry. I want, like, I want to see some people get saved, but I'm not like, I don't have like a specific number or anything, mm-hmm. but I'm just like, I've literally as many people as I can, like, I'll do whatever it takes. Like, I'm like, like, I know that God's put that in my heart and like, I'm committed to it. Yeah. But yeah, like to start my own ministry because I think that was scary as a girl. I'm like, how, I don't even know what I'm doing. And like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just me. Like I have to just go figure it out. This is what it yeah. feels like. But I know that like God will help me. But yeah, that's that's a dream. Yeah. Well, let's actually, so we, we typically pray mm-hmm. every episode. So I want to pray just for your vision, Amen. your mission. Yeah. So uh, so let's pray for that. Go for it. Yeah. You. So Father, I thank you for uh, the insight you have. You know everything. And you're the one who created us. You're the one who made us. And so Lindsay has a heart for evangelism. Uh, we hear the passion in her voice just about people coming to know Jesus. And so, Father, we, we just want to speak a blessing over her life. Lord, That just like Joshua, everywhere he walks, everywhere his foot touches, um, that wherever Lindsay goes, that she would uh, take the kingdom and that, you know, it would be kingdom come, God, your will be done. So we just pray for her future ministry. Lord, we thank you that you're go- you're, you've gone ahead of her already, Lord, and prepared uh, places and people, the right connections, and uh, that she can walk into her future with confidence, knowing that you're with her. And uh, we pray, and w- we pray right now, even for the people who will hear her preaching in the future yes. and attend some of these crusades and interact with her, uh, that you would, even right now, Lord, we just join with Jesus and interceding for them, saying, let them be saved, God. Bring them to salvation uh, all over the world. And uh, yeah, and we bless uh, all who are watching as well, Lord. If there's anyone who doesn't know you, uh, that they would come uh, and submit their life to you, Jesus, and know your kingship. Amen. 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 Yeah. Praise so, God. Thanks, Russ. Well, I'm excited because, you know, we, we were talking about, so Dean Scott and I went to the same school, and here mm-hmm. we are, you know, over a decade later and so you know who knows maybe a decade from now we'll still be doing this and we'll have you back on as you know evangelist moylan and hey, that'd be pretty cool yeah. you can tell us about your your latest crusade in timbuktu yeah. and, uh, you're like hey i just hit the two million dollars uh, two million dollars <laughs> two, million dollars. <laughs> no, two million soul mark that's better that's better years. that's much yeah. more yeah yeah, yes, prices. that'd be awesome. I mean, I'll Praise pray God. for the two million dollars. I mean, hey, yeah, we'll, pro- we'll probably need that too. <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, so. I think so. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining awesome. us on the podcast, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, thank it's you fun. for joining us here, whether you're joining uh, just on audio or watching the video. Uh, we're so appreciative um, that you that you are a part of this and just learning these stories of North Point. And uh, we hope you'll join us next time as well. And all, as always, you can check us out on Spotify. I don't usually say this part. You usually say this yeah. part. But Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the internet. <laughs> YouTube, Instagram, Instagram. The North Point guys on Instagram. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right.
you guys have an Instagram. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's, cool. producer Matt it's ran by the brilliant producer Matt Caforio. Come on, so Pastor Matt. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There we go. So well, anyway, thanks again for joining us, and uh, we hope to catch you next time.